Late winter spring muddler selection here. I've got a type 4 nanotube and I've got a large purple hook guide and I'm gonna slide on a flexi weight. This is a medium and that's gonna be our body. So the purpose of this is to keep the fly since we're gonna have a deer head or deer hair head being the muddler. I'm going to keep this fly as dense as possible to help it sink and we're going to add a tungsten raw weight along with this but I don't want a whole lot of body hackle or dubbing or anything that's going to hold this fly up from sinking deep because we still need to get deep um, actually deeper typically than the winter time main winter just because um, the rivers are going to drop and clear they're going to get sunny and these fish are going to jam really deep uh, and the muddlers act almost like a plug they're super erratic um, they have a ton of action to them and that's why they're great but they are a little tricky to get down so this fly isn't the fly isn't the easiest to cast but sometimes you know you need to cast heavy stuff to get it done all right so now off of this i tied on my tying thread off the flexi weight i'm just going to tie in little piece of copper UV polar chenille and I'm just gonna make a couple turns one one full turn two full turns and out And that'll kind of help, you know, give it some flash underneath and um, kind of create a little buffer between everything on the sharp edge there. Not that it's really that sharp, because we're not dealing with any kind of soft material. So our under flash is going to be SSS Flash Rainbow from Hell. So I'm gonna take some, make one wrap just to hold it there. In the middle, I'm gonna put the Alta Gold. And these aren't big clumps of each, you know. I mean, you can adjust how you how you like. All right, tie it down, fold it back over. So now the Alta Gold is sandwiched in between the two. some color so with this flash I really like <clears throat> these thinning shears and I'm just gonna spread this out and I've got a flat side and a shearing side on the flat side down I'm just gonna spread it out try to get and this is this won't cut anything I'm trying to get a single layer so I'll make one cut and move it down cut move it down cut move it down until they're all now we've got them all at different lengths all right that's going to work pretty good now the wing is going to be rabbit and this is really important rabbit usually comes in a package they're all kind of twisty turny so i just take the end both ends give it a good stretch and if I thought ahead I actually would have put it in the vise and then stretched it from the vise but now that we got our, our rabbit all stretched out I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna taper cut it pretty thin Need a little bit 
more off of here. Alright, now you can see we've got a pretty good taper cut there. And I'm going to put this just about a quarter inch, yeah, half inch, well, somewhere between a quarter and a half inch past the rabbit or past the flash. So I'm going to get a length here, cut it. Tie it down. And take a look, make sure everything is the way you like it. it. Looks good on this end. And now I'm going to take a tungsten raw weight, slide it on my tube. Zap my thread, zap a gap meaning, and this will keep the raw weight in place. I'm gonna go over it, make a couple wraps, go behind it, make a couple wraps, and then move my thread back up to the base of the rabbit here. And all that zap -a gap does is make sure that if my thread does break, if and in this fly it's pretty unlikely, but if it rubs a rock or whatever um, and the thread breaks, then I have that zap -a gap is protection for the cone or the raw weight. I'm sorry, sliding around a little bit. So we're going to create a dubbing loop. I'm going to move my thread in front of the raw weight. I'm going to leave it wide open here. And I'm going to take some Predator Wrap color to suit. But I'm going to do the freckled gold. And on top of that, I'm going to lay. The metallic barred metallic purple and silver. And then I'll lay them right on top of each other. And I take so I've got what I've got is I've got the little um, core here so I cut it right off the cord I'm going to take them and I'm going to just cut it in half I'm going to lay that down on the table I'm going to take these and just cut the cord off Make sure you get it all. And I'm going to pile the two together like that. So I've got all that predator up. Throw it in my dubbing loop. Find my little tool here. There it is. And now we can figure out how much of this flash we want, how long we want it, if we want them to overlap, and I just kind of over flashed here, and I'm just going to spread it out with my scissors. Make sure everything's nice and even. And so, we need to see where we're at. So this is, this is quite a bit. So I think I'm gonna pull out just a little bit down here. 
and then we can check our length. Some, I mean, you can get it long if you'd like it long. I think this is pretty good, but I'm going to leave the butts on this one. So a lot of, you can cut them, you can cut it even with your thread, like we do on the fox, or you can leave these little butts. And the butts will kind of help prop it uh, if you leave the longer butts. So I'm gonna do that. We're gonna give her a spin here. All right. Some of it got wrapped up, so we can take our bodkin, pull it out, or you can use your comb, kind of give them a good rake. And this is Vivis Adot I'm using. You can see the amount of abuse this stuff can take. And they don't have a lot of colors yet, so if you're wanting a blue or a purple, but, and they don't make it in an, an ADOT, um, the white actually takes Sharpie really well. So you can tie your whole fly with white, which is nice because it blends in. And then for your head or any parts of thread that are showing, you can actually just Sharpie it, whatever color you want. It works pretty good. All right, so now we've got our little pretty to wrap hackle we can start wrapping it so one we get two behind the weight I'm gonna jump on top of the weight tie it off There we go. So essentially, our goal there was we got our weight in, but we also hid the weight, so it doesn't look like we, you know, it doesn't have this weird gap with this raw weight here, just kind of hanging out in space, not doing a lot. We added we added a lot of flash and we added a lot of translucency. Um, which is really good because like I say the muddler head will give this fly a ton of action and so all this flash and translucency will end up being um, part of what makes this fly ultimately the most effective okay now I'm going to take these crazy legs and they come in these kind of skeins if you will so I just take two I'll just pull it off oops pull two off the top turn around pull two off the bottom so now I've got two identical purple and black on each side I'm gonna match them up with an open scissor pull the bottom straight down cut it that'll even them up and so these are actually attached now since we pulled, pulled them off of the little rubber skein. So I'm just going to tie in where it's attached at so I don't have rubber legs kind of flying everywhere. And it's an easy way because we can just match these up, match these sides up here because they should be identical. So it's an easy way to get really symmetrical rubber legs without doing a whole lot of measuring. So cut off the ends, I like to pull them up and then cut them and they snap back. And I've got, since I have two, I inherently have one in front, one in the back on both sides. So I'm just gonna take the one in front and trim it shorter than the one in back. This looks like the one in front. And I'm just gonna eyeball this here. Those look good. So we've got a longer and a shorter. And that all helps with the wiggle. Now for my wing, I'm gonna take a piece of fin raccoon. You can also use marble fox. If you use 
marble fox you will get a more prominent wing but it won't quite move around as good it won't wiggle but it'll stay bigger in the water so um, I guess you could add if you wanted marble fox and then fin over the top of it and I'm just gonna add purple that looks like a good amount the amount is really up to you I don't like it personally I don't like it super thick and it's like this kind of accent color on top so there we go yep, give it three wraps take a look make sure she's right where we want to be nice and centered all right looks good we can lock it in here give it a little pull make sure it's not going to go anywhere clip it nice and close tie our butts in all right now and you can add if you want you can add a little angel here to the top of your fin I think I'm gonna call this good just because I think I've got plenty of flash incorporated into the fly as it sits so now for probably I guess the hardest part of this fly which is the deer hair um, I've had some lead wire just a second ago here we go so a little trick most of you probably know it but to get when we're dealing now we have deer hair everything's gonna get harder and so if we want to and these rubber legs are gonna get in the way so anything that can get in the way will get in the way because deer hair just is hard to work with so I'm gonna pull everything back and I'm gonna take some lead wire I'm just gonna wrap it around the whole body of the fly and now I've got like the fly is contained so I can I can work on the head here so I've got a piece of deer belly white dyed purple I'm going to pick out a fair amount of deer hair like a good a good scissor scissor swipe I've got a good a good amount you can see so inch tall ish and I've got quite a bit there I'm gonna lose some now because before you do anything this guy here is your best friend you can see I've missing some teeth she's kind of been through battle with me but you really want to do a good job combing this deer hair you can see in, in two passes we just get all this junk out of it and all that junk will make it much harder to spin so I'm gonna do a couple more passes keep getting a little bit more now I'm gonna take it grab it with my other hand so I've got all the tips Ooh, got all the tips I'm gonna come it this way and take, try to grab it all in once clump it together and I'll put it in a hair stacker what I've found to be easiest for me is rather than I know it's got this wide open top where it's good for tips but I've always found it just to be easier while I've got it clumped to kind of roll on the bottom stacks and I got some undesirables in there pull those out give it a restack here all right good to go all right we've got our deer hair now we have to decide how long we want our deer hair if you want this short little color you can extend it back I'm gonna go 
so right where the nanotube stops but your hook guide starts there's that little that little um kind of bump you know that stops the nanotube i'm going to go right to that so take one take one soft wrap bring it up let it go on a second third fourth now take a look at it make sure she's nice and even and I'm holding this tube I'm gonna give it just a few more just for good measure wraps one thing you got to be careful with tubes is the whole tube so this isn't like a hook shank where I've got a I've got a hook bend to secure this this fly you know 100 percent in one direction when you crank really hard these tubes want to spin there's no way around that i mean it's just kind of the nature of tube flies because they're round the mandrel does a pretty good job but you've got to be a little bit careful of um, your tension and making sure the tube doesn't spin totally with your deer hair otherwise when the tube spins and the deer hair spins you don't actually get a thread bite and so if you're confused or if you're wondering if your deer hair's in good enough just pull it if nothing's coming out and i'm giving it some pretty good pulls you don't want to pull it hard enough to break it but if you're ever confused on if your wing's going to stay in or anything like that just give it a yank i mean if it falls out in your hands it's going to fall out on the river pull it all back and go up front make a wrap and i think i just almost nailed my dog with the bodkin because it fell sorry girl all right five turn with finish pull it back i'll do one more it's cut now for a razor blade I'm gonna leave this head fairly bold, like big you know just because I don't want this tiny little muddler head because that defeats the purpose of this erratic movement so I'm gonna curve the blade and just kind of up high and just trim up a couple that you may need to but I think that's looking pretty darn good so we'll redo the do the reveal here get our let out open her up and take a look at our handiwork that is a good looking bug so now we're gonna take it cut our tube nice and short if you use scissors reopen the tube before you burn it if you use a razor blade if it's sharp it will give you a nice clean cut now you got to be a little careful of the deer hair here so I'm just gonna re kind of pull it down blue part of the flame and just touch Got her a little smashed in there. And we can do our final little trim if you will, if you want. Not much though, those razor blades do a pretty good job. And there we go. Awesome 
kind of Scandi-esque muddler with some I mean I guess if if there's a scan if Greg Senio and uh, you know European Scandi fly Greg Senio fly and a Scandi fly kind of went to dinner and lit a candle and one thing led to another I guess this would be the result um, but these are just killer they move awesome they move like plugs um, awesome when uh, late winter spring and and smaller versions summer even uh, a lot of work for a summer fly but uh, they do work good uh, all year so thanks for watching mm -hmm.